Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on the topic. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength. Family, we know that plenty of people have gone their own way. They have followed their own vain imagination. Plenty of people have denounced the word of God because of misinformation, like being misinformed, following after man and, and his heart. And some people have joined cults and They even drink the drink of death, following after a man. They partake in polygamy and all of these things, following after a man. But today the word is telling us, Follow not thine own mind and thy strength. If we do these things, we would always go off. We should always let Christ be our shepherd and be led by the word of God. So I'm not planning on being before you very long, but we're going to allow this word to minister to us and give us instruction on how we ought to live this life and allow Christ to lead and guide us, not only through the good times, but through the challenging and the difficult times as well. So once again, this is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And it's my prayer that someone will be richly edified as we allow the scriptures to enlighten us. Follow not thine own mind in thy strength. So we're going to go ahead and get started at the book of Psalms 78, verses 1 through 8. He says, give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth, to my doctrine. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark singings of old, which we have heard and known. And our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises, the confessions of the spirit of God. And his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. For he established a testimony in Jacob. And appointed a law in Israel. Which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That the generation to come might know them. Even the children which should be born who should arise and declare them to their children that they might set their hope in Yahweh and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with Yahweh. So in other words, they was following their own mind and their own strength. They was being stubborn and, and rebellious. So were some of us. He said they set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with Yahweh. So were some of us. Deuteronomy. Chapter 32, in verses 5 through 8, he says, 
They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the spirit of God, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that have bought thee? Have he not made thee and established thee? He's asking a question. He said, remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee. Thy elders and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Sirach, chapter 33, verses 10 down to 15. And all men are from the ground. And Adam was created of earth. He just got to showing us right here in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 8. When he, when the Most High divided to the nations the inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Very important information. He said, and all men are from the ground and Adam was created of the earth. In much knowledge, the creator have divided them and made their ways diverse. Some of them have he blessed and exalted, and some of them he sanctified and set near himself. But, however, some of them have he cursed and brought low and turned out of their places. As comparison the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it as at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render to them as like it him best. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High and there are two and two, one against another. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 9 and 10. He said, for the spirit of God's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness, he led him about. He instructed him. He kept them as the apple of his eye. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 10 down to 15. He said, ye are my witnesses, said the spirit of God. And my servant whom I have chosen. He just got through showing us how he had instructed us. He said that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the spirit of God and beside me, there is no savior. I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. 
Therefore, ye are my witnesses, said the Spirit of God, that I am Yahweh. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work and who shall let it? Thus said the Spirit of God, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I have sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. I am the Spirit of God, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 3, verse 16 down to 20. He says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of Yahweh, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of Yahweh, him shall Yahweh destroy. For the temple of Yahweh is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Yahweh. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness all of the devices and inventions and the vain imaginations that man set his heart to do he don't seek counsel from the most high he don't seek wisdom he decides to follow his own mind and his own strength this is a what a lot of us do today. And then when we find ourselves in difficult situations, then we want to cry and ask the most high to help us. When we didn't consult him before we made that misinformed decision. He said he take it the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the creator knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26. He said, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. What profit is it? Anything that you can imagine in your mind that you want to conquer, that you want to possess, that you want to have this under your belt. You, you did this and you did that. You got this degree. You got that degree. You got this position. You got that position. You own this company and you own that company. What does it profit of a man if he gained the whole world every ambition you got your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame you won multiple Grammy Awards you are a decorated soldier You got the, the highest achieving award. What profited it? 
if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? It's something to, to meditate on, to salah on. Because in the society that we're in now, even more so than generations before, we are so driven to do the next thing. To possess the next thing. We're not satisfied with a I-10 or I-12, we got to have the I-15. We're not satisfied with a 65-inch screen TV. We got to have a, a 85. We're driven... By these things that have no eternal value. We driven to get up every day and pursue the things that's in our mind and and out the strength that we have to, to go after it. Do we have this same type of energy when it comes to eternal life and salvation and storing up doctrine in our storehouse? Studying our word and seeking and searching out counsel from the Most High, Yah. Do we have this same energy? It's a question. Do we have this same energy? Because it's very, very important that we set our house in order. That we do the things that he have called us to do. Sometimes people can be so critical when you say things, so... Somebody might say, oh, oh, is he talking about a, another God? Why did he just got through saying the most high Yah? I thought they were saying Yahweh over there. Oh, oh, he's talking about somebody else. So let me let me go ahead on and clear, clear this up before we get going any further. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 68 and verse 4. He says, sing unto Yahweh, sing praises to his name, his way, is star him that rotted upon the heavens by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless, and a judge, meaning what? A teacher of the widows is Yahweh in his holy habitation. So you see where I, I got this from. I pulled it right out of scripture. Just wanted to make sure we, we took care of that before we go any further. But we see here in, in Matthew 16 and 26, 
he's telling us and asking us a question. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 9, verse 14 down to 16. He said, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. And our devices, our inventions, our craftiness are but uncertain. For the corruptible body press it down the soul and the earthy tabernacle wear down the mind that music upon Many things. This is what I just got through saying. Our mind is always racing. I want to achieve this. I want to achieve that. I want to go do this. I want to go do that. I want to purchase this. I want to purchase that. I want to have this amount of money. I need to have this amount. No, now I got to go after this amount. For the corruptible body, press it down the soul in the earthy tabernacle, wear down the mind. Tab music upon many things. Mm. And hardly do we guess aright at the things that are upon earth. We going after things that have no eternal value. That's why a lot of time I think about what Shaq did. And I, I I got to take my hat off to the brother because during the time when I was coming up to school, you had brothers was getting shot and killed for their pair of Jordans. You had brothers that will be in certain locations coming out of a mall. And they made them give it up. If they didn't have nothing on them to protect themselves, they had to come out of them pairs of shoes they wanted to live. Something that is just to protect your feet could have cost you your life because the value that people have put on these pairs of shoes. It was bad enough that they cost as much as they did, but then to lose your life after them. Shaq said, I don't want my shoes to cost a whole lot of money. I don't want someone killing after my shoes. So he made them very, very, very affordable. What the average working family could afford them. I often think about stuff like that, the things that we put value on. And sometimes it's a fad and sometimes it's not. It's a fad going on right now for whatever reason with the, the children in the middle schools there. Everyone want a, a Stanley Cup to take to school, a big Stanley Cup to drink out of. Why? I don't know. They've been making them for years, but all of a sudden, everybody want a Stanley Cup. But he said, and hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. But the things that are in heaven, who have searched out? Who 
just putting in work to search out the things in heaven. What kind of energy are you putting forth to search out the things in heaven? You being driven to do any and everything to achieve the best life, the best career, the best relationship, the best a salesman in this earth. To be liked by your family, your friends, the people that you around. What kind of energy are you putting forth searching out the things in heaven, the spiritual things? Something for you to meditate on. First John. Chapter 2, verse 15 down to 6, 17. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life your social status it is not of the father but is of the world and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that do it the will of Yahweh abide it forever. So we see that these are the weightier matters. Doing the will of Yahweh. These are the things that we should be chasing after. Searching out and seeking his divine word, his divine instructions, his divine direction. This should be our guide. Matthew. Chapter six. Verse 19 down to 21. He says, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust do it corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. I have watched documentaries where people had their whole retirement Savings stolen from a greedy man who promised them a higher return. They wasn't satisfied with it just being an annuity or just something low risk, being that they was already retired and made good money but because he promised this higher return they trusted him and they lost it all some of them mind was strong enough to where they realize well I can't lay and ponder on what I lost 
I got to go back to work and I got to keep going to do what I have to do to survive. But then you had others, mine was not as strong and they gave up. Some of them even took their own life when they saw that their whole life savings was gone. They couldn't handle the pressure. They couldn't handle the thought of starting all over. They couldn't handle the thought of they trusted in a man. They followed their own mind and their own strength and, and they got caught up. He say, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Exactly the point. Where is your treasure today? Because if your treasure is wisdom, your heart will be going after wisdom. If your treasure is chasing after money or material things, your heart is going to be right there along with it. Sirach, chapter 5 and verse 2 down to 7. He says, follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. Don't do it. And say not, who shall control me for my works, my deeds? For the creator will surely revenge thy pride. Say not, I have sinned and what harm have happened unto me? Don't you say that. For the creator is long suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. And say not his mercy is great, he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins, for mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation rested upon sinners. Make no tarrying to turn to the creator. Don't you sit there and be wasting time. He said, the, the, day, the very day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Make no tarrying to turn unto the creator. And put not all from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the creator come forth. And in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in a day of vengeance. Sirach, chapter 3, verse 24 down to 28. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. And an, an evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. Exactly the point. Following after the, their own mind and their own strength. He says, without eyes. Without understanding, thou shall want light. You shall want truth. You're going to want wisdom. You're going to want knowledge, but you don't have the understanding. 
He said, profess not the knowledge thereof, or profess not the knowledge, therefore, that thou hast not. So many have claimed to know God and to, to know Christ. And a lot of them is still to this day worshiping flesh. They don't realize Christ is speaking in the Old Testament. He's speaking in the Apocrypha and in the New Testament. And some people would tell you Christ didn't even come on the scene until the New Testament. That tells you and shows you a lot that they are worshiping flesh. They only can see where this man was born. And from that point there on, they started worshiping a man. And this same man tells you in scripture, why thou callest me good? There's none good but God, meaning but Yahweh. But for some reason, People have gone after their own vain opinion. They have trusted in man. They have trusted in their own mind and their own strength. Their own way. And they have not Hearken unto the voice of Yahweh. And I'm going to show you this in scripture before we go on. This man that I'm speaking of. A lot of you already know, but I'm just going to show you in scripture. In Mark chapter 10 and Verse 18, it says in Yahweh or some are saying, Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God, meaning that is Yahweh. They're not knowing that Spiritually, this name means salvation, but they still choose to worship, even call this man a God, and they worship this man, the, fl the flesh, this man. Follow in their own mind and their own strength. Not realizing this name spiritually means salvation. The anointed one, which is Jehovah, which is Christ, the spirit of God. That's the one who they should be following after. Christ, the Spirit of God. But for whatever reason, a lot of them have chose to go another way. And this is why he told us, going right back to Sirach 3 and 24, for many are deceived by their own vain opinion and an evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. See, they so suspicious. Oh, oh, I know this talking about him. I know this is him. I know who I serve. 
They sung songs about them. I remember a song that we used to sing in the church. Said, I got a feeling that everything going to be all right. Jesus done told me everything going to be all right. And we just make up all of these lyrics. Everything going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And I'm not even going to give you my singing voice, but I bring back all of those memories of all of those years, sweating and putting in time, working for the other side. But when I look in the scripture, I can't say That that song was being sung. It's lining up with what I see in the scripture. We got to put in some work. We got to remember, meaning repent and do the works that's me for repentance. We got to work to do. Because our God have an issue with us. We ain't got time to be singing. I got a feeling everything going to be all right. He has given us warning after warning after warning after warning. We got to be about our father's business. He says, without eyes, thou shalt want light. You're going to want this truth, this knowledge, this wisdom. But he said, profess not the knowledge, therefore that thou hast not. A stubborn heart shall fare evil at the last. And he that loveth danger shall perish therein. And abstinent heart shall be laden with sorrows. And the wicked man shall heap sin upon sin. And the punishment of the proud, there is no remedy. For the plant of wickedness have taken root in him. Sirach, chapter 10, verse 12, down to 31. He says, the beginning of pride is when one departed from Yahweh and his heart is turned away from his maker. For pride is the beginning of sin and he that have it shall pour out abomination. And therefore, the creator brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. The creator have cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. The creator have plucked up the roots of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their place. The creator overthrew countries of the heathen and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. He took some of them away and destroyed them and have made their memorial to cease from the earth. Pride was not made for men, nor furious anger for them that are born of a woman. They that desire the creator are a sure seed. And they that love him an honorable plant. 
They that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. Among brethren, he that is chief is honorable. So are they that desire the creator in his eyes, in his understanding. The fear meaning the desire of the creator goeth before the obtaining of authority. So true. But roughness and pride is the losing thereof. Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, their glory is the desire of the creator. It is not meet to despise to speak evil of the poor man that have understanding. It's not meet to do this. Neither is it convenient to magnify a sinful man. Great men and judges in continents shall be honored. Yet is there none of them greater than he that desired the creator. Unto the servant that is wise shall they that are free do service. The ones that have liberty, the ones that have been loose from the chains of bondage, the ones that is freed from being locked up in the prison house, they're going to do service. And he that have knowledge will not grudge when he is reformed. A lot of time we make mistakes. And we have to be corrected. But if you have the knowledge of the most high, you have the wisdom of the most high, you will not grudge. Or have a grudge on your brother when you are being corrected. You won't do it. Because he's correcting you because he loves you. Correction is good for the heart. Why we don't never feel like we have the big head or, or we have uh, arrived. We all make mistakes sometimes. He said he that have knowledge will not grudge when he is reformed. I have made mistakes. You have made mistakes. But we should not hold a grudge when we are being reformed. Be not otherwise in doing thy business. And boast not thyself in a time of thy distress. Don't do it. Better is he that labored and abounded in all things than he that boasted himself and wanted bread. You want want knowledge my son my servant glorify thy soul in meekness remain humble and give it honor according to the dignity thereof who will justify him that sin it Against his own soul. And who will honor him that. Dishonored. His own life. 
The poor man is honored for his skill. And the rich man is honored for his riches. He that is honored in poverty, how much more in riches. And he that is dishonorable in riches, how much more in poverty. But this right here is something for you to meditate on as well. Even looking at it spiritually. Something for you to meditate on. Let's keep going. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 8. Verse 1 down to 21, he says, Wisdom reacheth from one end to another mightily, and sweetly do it, she order all things. I loved her and saw her out from my youth. I desired to make her my spouse. And I was a lover of her beauty. And that she is conversant with Yahweh. She magnified her nobility. Yea, the creator of all things himself loved her. For she is privy to the mysteries of the knowledge of Yahweh. And a lover of his works. If riches be a possession to be desired in this life. What is richer than wisdom? See, this is why I had you to meditate on that last verse then. Sirach chapter 10. He said, what is richer than wisdom, the worker of all things? And if prudence work, who of all that are is a more cunning workman than she? And if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtues. For she take it, for she teach it temperance and prudence, justice and fortitude, which are such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life. If a man desire much experience, she knoweth things of old and the conjure it or write what is to come. She knoweth the subtilities of speeches and can espound dark sentences. She foresee it signs and wonders in the events of seasons and times. Therefore, I purpose to take her to me, to live with me, knowing that she would be a counselor of good things and a comfort and cares and grief. For her sake, I shall have estimation among the multitude and honor with the elders, though I be young. I shall be found of a quick Concede in judgment and shall be admired in the sight of great men. When I hold my tongue, they should, they shall bide my leisure. And when I speak, they shall give good ear unto me. If I talk much, they shall lay their hands upon their mouth. Moreover, by the means of her, I shall obtain 
immortality. And leave behind me an everlasting memorial to them that come after me. I shall set the people in order and the nations shall be subject unto me. Horrible tyrants shall be afraid when they do but hear of me. I shall be found good among the multitude and valiant in war. After I am come into my house, I will repose myself with her. For her conversation have no bitterness, and to live with her have no sorrow, but mirth and joy. Now, when I considered these things in myself and pondered them in my heart, how that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality and great pleasure it is to have her friendship and in the works of her hands are infinite riches and in the exercise of conference with her prudence and in talking with her a good report i went about seeking how to take her to me for I was a witty child and had a good spirit. Yea, rather being good, I came into a body undefiled. Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her, except Yahweh gave her me. And that was a point of wisdom also to know whose gift she was. I prayed unto the creator and besought him and with my whole heart I said, Wisdom of Solomon 9, 1 through 8, O God of my fathers and creator of mercy, who has made all things with thy word and ordained man through thy wisdom? that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made and order the world according to the equity and righteousness and execute judgment with an upright heart. Give me wisdom that sit it by thy throne and reject me not from among thy children for I, thy servant and son of thine handmaid, am a feeble person and of a short time and too young for the understanding of judgment and laws, the doctrine and teachings. For though a man be never so perfect among the children of men, yet if thy wisdom be not with me, he shall be nothing regarded. Thou has chosen me to be a king, a leader of thy people, and a judge, a teacher of thy sons and daughters. Thou has commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount and an altar in the city, in the people, the tribes wherein thou dwellest a resemblance of thy holy tabernacle, which thou hast prepared from the beginning. In other words, thou have chosen me to teach the word of truth to thy people. Building up Zion again through the word of truth. Building up the temple, meaning what? The people of God, the city of God, through the word of truth. Giving them this vital information. Teaching them to lay up their treasures in heavenly places. 
looking upon spiritual rewards and spiritual things and not things upon this earth. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. He have made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he have set the world in their heart. Mm. That's something to meditate on right there. So that no man can find out the work that Yahweh make it from the beginning to the end. He have set the world in their heart. Mm. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. He showed his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgment, doctrine and teachings unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the spirit of God. He have set the world in their heart. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 9 down to 13. And wisdom was with thee. Which knoweth thy works. And was present. When thou made it the world and knew what was acceptable in thy sight and right in thy commandments. Oh, send her out of thy holy heavens and from the throne of thy glory that being present she may labor with me that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. For she know it and understand it all things. And she shall lead me soberly in my doings. And preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable. And then shall I teach thy people righteously. And be worthy to sit in my father's seat. For what man is he that can know the counsel of Yahweh? Or who can think what the will of the creator is? Verse 17 and 18. And thy counsel who have known, except thou give wisdom, and send thy Holy Spirit from above. For so the ways of them which live on the earth were reformed. And men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee. And were saved, delivered, set free through Wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 24 down to 29. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passes and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of Yahweh and a pure influence flowing. From the glory of the Almighty. Therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light. The unspotted mirror of the power of Yahweh. And the image of his 
goodness. And being but one, she can do all things and remain it in herself. She make it all things new and in all ages entering into holy souls. She make it them friends of God and prophets. For Yahweh loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. For she is more beautiful than the sun, and above all the order of stars being compared with the light, she is found before it. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 10 and 11. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and return it not thither, but water the earth and make it, it bring forth in, bro, in bud that it may give seed to the soil and bread to the eater. So shall my word, so shall my wisdom be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 down to 13. Get wisdom. Get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not and she shall preserve thee. Love her and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou doest embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sins. In the years of thy life, shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. When thou runnest, thou shall not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her. Hold on to her. For she is thy life. Going right back to Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. He have set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that Yahweh make it from the beginning to the end. Back to Proverbs 4 and 13. Take fast whole of instruction let her not go keep her for she is thy life 
Follow not thine own mind and thy strength. Family is very important that we hold on to this word and allow it to minister unto us. Even as we lay down at night, we can meditate in Salah on this word. Let it marinate in our hearts and our minds. Give us a new perspective on life. What are we chasing? What are our ambitions and our goals? What are our priorities? Are they in order? Do we need a, a reset? Or do we need to readjust some things? He already told us in his words, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. So are we seeking after spiritual things or are we going after material and carnal things follow not thine own mind and thy strength so family i'm gonna say a happy sabbath to everyone as we begin this sabbath morning and i pray that this teaching helps someone that's going through the crossroads of life. Don't know which way to turn. So I'm going to say a shalom to everyone until we meet again. Shalom.